minute just rolled over, so I'll go ahead and introduce. Uh, and I'm, I know I, I didn't get a chance to practice your name before we started, but uh, okay. Qian Xiao. Yeah, it's Chen. Yeah, Chen. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. yeah. Let me try and... to make it the full screen. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Well, I'll hand it over to you then. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'll get started. So, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. So after we have uh, heard uh, many hardcore uh, topics, uh, let's discuss something more relaxing. So today I'm gonna discuss about uh, the Kubernetes performance visualizations at Nvidia. Uh, so first, some uh, background informations. So Kubert is the core component in NVIDIA's cloud platform stack. Basically, we use Kubert to provide a VM resource to cloud gaming service. So when we use uh, Kubert, uh, we found an issue. Uh, that is, uh, we are a lack of uh, visualizations. Uh, this makes uh, it ha very hard to debug and uh, triage issues. So usually when we have a problem, we can, use, can you only use command line tools like kubectls to get the info. Uh, this is usually uh, inefficient and uh, not intuitive. And also, uh, so our cloud team is uh, very big. So there are multiple teams. There are a cloud service team and there are validation team and there are SRE teams. So uh, for the external customers, uh, they are usually uh, very, find it very difficult to understand uh, how the Kubernetes works and how the, our platform side works. So uh, uh, that's why we need uh, some better uh, visualizations for on the platform side, especially for the Kubernetes. Uh, so what process uh, is needed for the visualizations? So the first and the most important one is the VM creations. We would like to know when the VM is created, how the phase transition process goes like how long does it take uh, for a VM to reach pending state and then reach uh, scheduling phase and then scheduled phase and finally the running phase. Another process that is interested to visualize is to uh, VM deletion process. We would like to know uh, how the VM deletion goes, whether it is succeeded or failed and how the cleanup process goes. And in addition to that, we would like to know uh, some uh, internal performance of Kubert as well. Uh, some important uh, components like a uh, work queue and things like that, uh, need, they need to be uh, uh, visualized. So in Nvidia, uh, we have a different type of way to, uh, to visualize uh, our platform. So uh, we have uh, matrix-based uh, visualized, we have uh, logs and we have uh, traces. And uh, specifically for Kubert, uh, we chose Prometheus and Grafana-based uh, monitoring stack to visualize uh, Kubert uh, metrics. So uh, last year, uh, Upstream uh, has introduced some uh, very interesting metrics for us to uh, visualize. Uh, the first one is the uh, Kubert uh, VMI uh, phase transition metrics. So uh, this matrix will basically uh, track the dynamics of uh, VM phases, including scheduling, creation, and uh, deletions. Uh, also, we have uh, VM phase count phases. So in this case, we can uh, know uh, how the uh, VM uh, is dist distributed uh, inside uh, our uh, zones, like how many of them are in running phase and how many of them are in pending and scheduling and scheduled phase. And also uh, there's a uh, uh, Kubert uh, work queue uh, matrix. Uh, so uh, this uh, is related to the uh, internal performance of Kubert uh, work queue components. So we can use this to track the performance of Kubert's uh, uh, internal behavior. So uh, we know whether under a large uh, pressure Kubert uh, behaves well. Uh, so in order to visualize uh, the above matrix, uh, we uh, develop a, a dashboard. So this is the overview of uh, the Kubert uh, performance dashboard. 
So we put everything inside this single dashboard. So uh, all the uh, info is uh, contained in this dashboard. So we can make it uh, compact and uh, intuitive. So the overall layout is like uh, initially we, so uh, the lower uh, the, the panel, the more detail it contains. So like initially uh, on the top, we have uh, uh, like a user manual uh, panel. This is uh, usually for the external customers because they don't have a very good understanding of uh, the Kubernetes. And then we have a, a performance indicator uh, dashboard. Uh, so this can serve as a quick overview of uh, how the things like, and then some, some details dashboard. So uh, let me introduce uh, these uh, uh, panels one by one. So first is the performance indicators. So usually uh, uh, there are uh, many external customer for our uh, dashboard. So usually uh, they don't want to go over the very details about how, how the Kubernetes works internally. They just want to know uh, how uh, some, uh, some, some KPIs, some uh, very important performance indicators. So one of the most important uh, indicator is the VM creation time. So this is basically the very uh, the most important uh, indicators for Kubernetes, because uh, on the cloud service side, what they care about most is uh, how fast this VM can be created. If we create it like in like three to four or even ten minutes, then the the, the cloud cloud gaming users will feel that they, it takes very long time to, to load the game, then if you, they will feel very bad. So uh, this indicator is very important. So we put uh, this indicator on top. So it will track the end-to-end -end time from VM creation to, to running. And also it contains some stats of each phase, like the, the average and 75 quantile, 95 quantile, and 99 quantile, uh, of time to reach a specific phase. Like the graph here is track uh, the time it takes from previous phase to the running phase. So in general, this uh, performance indicator can be used by SRE team for a quick judgment of whether the, the covert and the cloud platform behaves well. So the next uh, panel is the phase transition time breakdown panel. Uh, this panel is very important for uh, the developers to fast triage whether there are, there's some, some problem in the VM creation process. So uh, basically, uh, this panel will visualize the Kubert VMI phase transition time from creation seconds uh, matrix. So it will display uh, time it takes to reach a specific phase. And uh, in general, it is like a stacked bar histogram. So we stack uh, different phase at the same time uh, together. So it is, uh, it is compact and uh, uh, intuitive to, 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 to check uh, how long does it take for each phase. So uh, the most important uh, usage is to track how, how, uh, which phase spends most of the time. Then we know that phase has some issues that may lead to triage and deep dive. Like in this graph, you can see that, uh, so different colors represent different phases. So the, the yellow colors represents the time it takes to reach pending phase. So the light uh, blue uh, uh, represents time it takes to reach scheduling phase. The dark blue means time it takes to reach scheduled phase. And the, the, the green uh, represents time it takes to reach running phase. So in this graph, we find that the dark blue bar is always the longest. So it means uh, it takes most time uh, for the VMs to go from the scheduling phase to schedule, scheduled phase. So it means the VMs takes a long time uh, in, in scheduling. So basically this graph will provide uh, very useful information uh, on the health of uh, each phases. And uh, actually there's a shortcoming of breakdown uh, graph. 
that is uh, the data in the transition time matrix is aggregated. So we threw uh, 95 quantile calculations. In this case, uh, we lack of, uh, we, we lose some of the information from this matrix. So we, we cannot, we, we, we are, some uh, information of individuals VMs is lost during these 95 quantile calculations. Like uh, if we see this, uh, we can see that. So each bar represents uh, the, the 95 quantile of all of the VM creation. It doesn't contain uh, the information of uh, individual VMs. So uh, that's why uh, we uh, add a heat map uh, panel as well. So for the heat map, it is very suitable for uh, visualize uh, each bucket of histogram matrix. So basically, uh, this histogram matrix contains uh, many buckets. So each bucket uh, represents uh, a time, like uh, in this graph. Uh, so uh, so this uh, the example of this graph is, the, so it contains many cells, actually. So this, this heat map uh, panel contains many cells, and each cell represents a bucket in this histogram uh, matrix. And uh, the brighter the cell is, the bigger number is in this bucket. Like in this example, if we hover, uh, if we hover uh, over this uh, cell, we will see, we will check that the count of this bucket is 1.18K. So it means uh, there are many uh, VMs that is inside this bucket that has uh, transition time of like, if we check uh, the, the Y axis, we can see that is like 10 seconds. So it means uh, this heat map tells us that there are many uh, uh, VMs that has a phase transition time uh, of uh, 10 seconds. And also we found that the, this, uh, this row is also very bright. Uh, so it means there are also many VMs that has a phase transition time like if we check the y-axis, it's five seconds. Yeah. So you can we can see that previously many uh, VMs are most VMs are in the transition time of five seconds, but now uh, most VMs are, have a transition time of ten seconds. So it means maybe some issue happens, so the performance becomes worse. That uh, more uh, VMs has a, a larger transition time. So, uh, so this is basically very helpful. And another usage is it can help us to track some, some outliers. So if like many VMs are actually like in a five minutes cell or even 10 minutes cell, it, it, it means that uh, we have many outliers VMs that has a very unhealthy uh, transition time. It's, transition time is too long and it needs uh, some deep dive and triage. And uh, also we have a VM count distribution uh, panels. So uh, usually uh, one of the one of the very important indicator is that uh, how uh, the VMs uh, goes for each phase. Like how many VMs are in running phase, and how many VMs are in scheduled phase, and how many VMs are in scheduling phase and pending phase. So if we check this graph and found that there are many. Uh, uh, VMs at a like the VM count of of, of running v, uh, of running VMs is very large. We know uh, this zone is in general is healthy because most of the VMs are in running phase. So if in some conditions that we found that the the running VMs drops a lot and uh, the failed VMs or the pending VMs, the count of them increases a lot. We know uh, the zone may be in an unhealthy state. So the SRE team, we know uh, this zone is not healthy, so they may uh, take the zone offline for a quick maintenance or of, of deep dive and triage. And also we have a, a total succeed and failed VMs. So this can actually help us uh, to see how the, the, how the health of a uh, zone goes uh, uh, through the times. So if we found that the the failed VMs keeps increasing very fast, then it means uh, the VMs may be not healthy and may need a uh, maintenance or something like that. Uh, in general, there are uh, many uh, interesting uh, use cases for uh, 
this uh, Kubernetes performance dashboard. Uh, so the first uh, typical use case uh, is the heavy cloud uh, gaming uh, workload uh, use case. This is very typical and the most important use case. So basically, uh, Emilia's cloud gaming service, uh, service often run into some high load situation, like, uh, like in the night uh, or, or in the, some holidays, many users will, will come to start playing games at the same time. In this case, many VMs will be created in very short time. This will uh, have very large pressure on the cloud platform side. Uh, the cloud service, basically, they will use uh, Kibana to track, track uh, VM resource information. Like in this graph, uh, they will track, uh, they have a VM pool, so they, they track uh, the, the how many VMs are there in the VM pools. So in this graph, we see that under some uh, very high load uh, situations, uh, the VM pool will, will, will drop a lot. This may be possibly due to some load test of or some high load uh, use cases. In this case, the VM will, will drop a lot. So uh, service side, cloud service side use Kibana to track. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, on the platform side, we need bet better uh, visualizations as well to, to triage the issue on, on our side to make sure that our cloud platform side uh, is not the wide up problems occurs. So basically, uh, the phase transition time is very suitable to do some an analyze uh, on platform side. Like, uh, so this, uh, this graph uh, is captured at the same time as this graph. So, in, uh, so on the service side, we see that there's a, a VM pool drop at around 4 a.m. So, in this graph, uh, the platform part, phase transition time breakdown graph, we, we found the same uh, problem happen at, the, like, at around the same time. It also happens around the 4 a.m. We found that the, uh, the light blue uh, bar increases very fast. And also we see that the count of running VMs decrease a lot. So this uh, is, inconsistent with the uh, service side uh, graph. So uh, how, uh, what this uh, graph tells us, so since the, uh, the scheduling uh, bar is very, very long, so it means it takes uh, most time, spend most time to reach a scheduling phase. So uh, in Kubernetes, if, uh, if a VMI spend a long time to reach scheduling phase, it is means usually it is keep in the, the pending phase. So usually it is probably due to the lack of system resources, like uh, uh, lack of uh, GPUs or lack of uh, memories that cause this. So with this graph, we quickly uh, know uh, what may be probably the issues. And they can, we can resolve these issues like uh, by adding more system resources or clean up some often node that take up uh, most resources. So in general, this help us to uh, triage uh, the issues in the cloud gaming workload on platform side. Uh, the second use case is uh, this graph can help uh, the bug detection as well. Uh, one good example is the uh, virtual controller panic bug. So, uh, so we found that uh, when, whenever there's a, a, a large VM uh, deletion operations, it may cause a virtual controller uh, to, to panic. So whenever the virtual controller to pa is panic, it cannot uh, expose uh, any uh, matrix. So on the graph, we will see that uh, the, the graph is uh, interrupted because uh, the virtual controller is panic and it cannot expose any matrix. So uh, with this graph, uh, uh, it is easy, very easy for us to detect some uh, situations like the vertical controller panic. And we also know why it is panic. And, we, and if we check the log, we can find uh, why it is panic. 
So the panic for this is uh, due to uh, the, the deleted final state unknown object is not properly handled. That causes a uh, uh, panic. So usually we need to add some error handling uh, logic to make sure that it not cause very uh, severe issues. Uh, some details can be found as uh, this uh, GitHub uh, issue. So in summary, uh, the newly introduced uh, phase transition matrix uh, provides a very good approach to visualize the Kubert uh, performance. It can be used by uh, external customers to quickly overview uh, the behavior of Kubert. So they don't need to uh, uh, deep dive uh, into the details or keep asking uh, us about how, uh, whether the, the platform is healthy. It can use just use the indicator uh, panel to check whether the zone is healthy. It can also be used by developers uh, to detect uh, hidden bugs because uh, the uh, the Kubert, uh, the this the Grafana uh, dashboard is in real time. It's very suitable to to check uh, when the problem happens, when and and where the problem happens. And then to further deep dive, they can check uh, the logs on Elasticsearch to, to deep triage uh, the, the problem and the issues. Uh, so currently, uh, the dashboard is uh, staged in uh, Emilia's Cloud Platform production environment, and it helps uh, the visualizations in uh, the heavy cloud gaming uh, workload scenario. Yep, uh, that's. Uh, my talk today. It is a short one. <laughs> yeah. Any questions you guys have? Maybe have. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. I, I really like the case studies you went through there. Yeah, uh, thanks. We do have some uh, questions in the chat. Uh, first off, Andre was asking if NVIDIA is working on live migration of VMs with GPUs. Uh, so uh, when you say uh, live migration, uh, do you mean that's we can do a VM restart to a, or a move it to a new data center without like any issues, is that like that? Yes, I believe so. Something like the SRI OV where you can uh, take your virtual adapter with you as, as you uh, migrate from one node to another. Uh, uh, probably at this point we're talking nodes, but possibly clusters as well. Yeah. I think uh, there may be some 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 design and discussion ongoing, but I as I as far as I know, we 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 currently don't have it yet. So usually, yeah, we don't we need some maintenance window to to achieve this actually. Okay, yeah. and he uh, Andre also asks uh, whether you can monitor the GPU temperature with Prometheus and and your plugins. Yes, I think uh, there are actually several uh, open source uh, exporters like NVSM exporter and uh, SNMP exporter. I think they can be used to uh, monitor GPU temperature. I think it is currently already implemented in our platform. Yeah. So basically, it's like uh, so NVIDIA SMI uh, has exposed some interface uh, and the Golan uh, SDK for us to, to write a quick exporter to export. Uh, to 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 retrieve the temperature information from uh, the framework and then expose it as Prometheus matrix. Yeah, I think it is doable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have uh, a number of questions uh, that are interested in seeing how your uh, user load works out. Uh, so one of them uh, from Daniel was, uh, "What is the average time that users will tolerate until there's some sort of uh, churn?" Yeah, I think if it's larger than five minutes, I think it will be very, very long. So usually, I think they can. I think most of the users cannot tolerate more than five minutes. So the usual case would be like uh, one or two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Because if if we cannot uh, provision a VM, then they cannot uh, start streamer, and then they cannot play games. So it is very obvious, uh, and the, you, every user can can observe it. If if they since the game cannot start, uh, it can lead to a very long. Loading time. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting to know. That's kind of the the metric the, that the uh, SREs have to live on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and I think this is basically the most important indicators. Yeah, if it has very long 
loading times and yeah, his, the gaming sessions must drop and the user may yeah may, may leave our service. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Marcelo has a, I think we have like two or three more questions. So Marcelo has a question, what is the average and maximum number of concurrent create requests that you typically see? Uh, so the maximum number of concurrent creation of VMs, I think is uh, like hundreds of, yeah. And sometimes it may reach, reach uh, thousands, yeah. So That's we're not very large. Big, I think yeah. uh, my, my colleague uh, Ryan and Fan may have a better uh, some some data as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you plan to make the dashboards publicly available? Eshe asks. Uh, I think uh, currently maybe it is mainly for uh, internal use, so we may not make it uh, public available yet because it is. Uh, uh, Deeply coupled with our our zone configurations, so maybe it is hard for external uh, customer to use. Okay, uh, Chris has a final question or a question. Um, I think in, in terms of measuring the the average and maximum number of concurrent requests, like we were talking about earlier, do you kind of uh, group those by minute, by second? Like, what, what's your time bucket? Yes, I think the time bucket is it is by 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 second, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it should be by second. Yeah, so in general, it is yeah very hard high load. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, oh, I saw how more question. I, I think that was a reaction, like whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, also there's exactly. a, yeah, yeah. It, it may uh, be also <laughs> somebody else sharing a uh, Grafana dashboard. Uh, Marcelo was. Uh, yeah. mentioning one that's useful, but uh, yeah, this I think is just awesome. into the chat. Yeah, I think Upstream also has a very uh, good dashboard. Maybe we can further introduce uh, this dashboard in our uh, own platform as well. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So I think we'll allow just a couple seconds more if you have any more questions. Um, we can go in the chat. I think we're good. Oh, so thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah, thanks a lot for for this talk. Yeah, thanks a lot. Oh, thanks a lot for hosting this. <laughs> thank you. Of course. Yeah, so I will start video. <laughs>